Hello there. Today I would like to talk about moccasins. Let's start with the definition. The word moccasin comes from an Algonquin word that just means shoes. In modern English, it's come to mean any native style shoes. Although the word is also used as shorthand for any sort of soft-soled leather shoe. Now, just about everybody had their own way of making moccasins. Obviously, different locations are going to place different demands on your footwear. As a notable example, in the Great Plains, moccasins had hard rawhide soles, whereas up here they were made of soft, flexible leather. The style that has survived the best into the modern era is based on the Algonquin design. If you want to take a closer look at this image, I'm posting a link to the website in the description below. They've also got quite a good concise article to go with it. Give it a look, why not? But for now, I'm moving on. This is a pair of moccasins that I made in an approximation of the traditional mohawk style. These are made from leather that I tanned using traditional techniques. I don't have too much to say about the design, so I'm just going to talk about how they differ from modern shoes in terms of practicality. The most notable thing about them is how thin and light and flexible they are. They're a lot like being barefoot, but with a much tougher sole. This thin, flexible sole makes these moccasins unbelievably comfortable, and gives you a great deal of sensitivity and dexterity. You can move very quietly in these. On the negative side, though, these moccasins are a lot like being barefoot. They'll protect you from the worst of the scrapes and prickles, but uncomfortable terrain like jagged rocks is still going to be just as uncomfortable. And if you stamp down hard on some upward-facing twig, it might still go into your foot. Because of this, you have to walk differently in a pair of moccasins than you do in a pair of modern shoes. You have to walk as though you were barefoot, checking carefully for each step and laying your feet down gently. Some people find this a pain, but just like anything else, it's a skill. Once you figure it out, it becomes second nature. The next major difference between these and modern shoes is the lack of any sort of tread. And once the leather on the soles gets compressed a little bit, they can be very slippery, especially in winter. Another notable difference is that they lack any sort of heel. This means that you have to run differently. When you run in modern shoes, you strike with your heel. You can do this because modern shoes have a very thick sole to absorb the impact. If you run like this in moccasins, you end up with bruised heels and bad knees. In moccasins, the thing to do is to run on your toes, so that your ankle acts as an extra spring. This allows your legs to better absorb the impacts. To reiterate, it's a lot like being barefoot. One thing these moccasins don't handle well is wet. Traditional leather is very absorptive, much like a chamois cloth. When wet, it wears out a lot faster. And what's worse is that when it dries, it goes stiff and hard. It's not a big deal. You can return the flexibility by just agitating and stretching the leather for a few minutes, but it's a bloody nuisance. Because of this, unless it was very cold, most people up here would just go barefoot if it was raining. Another thing you can do to prevent this is to make your moccasins from very heavily smoked leather. Something I've heard about the people out west is that they would make their moccasins from the smoke holes of old teepees. The smoke gets into the skin and coats all the collagen fibers, preventing them from sticking together when wet. How well these moccasins perform in winter can vary depending on the temperature. If it's a couple degrees below zero, they're fine. More than that, and they're not really warm enough. What's worst of all, though, is a couple degrees above zero. If you've got wet packing snow on the ground, the moccasins immediately soak through and then suck all the heat out of your feet. There were, of course, purpose-built winter moccasins, or maybe you'd call them mucklucks, but I don't have an example to show you, so I won't be talking about them. Something that was done to winterize regular moccasins was they could be stuffed with rabbit skins, or else be worn with rabbit skin socks. This would solve some of the issues, as fur provides warmth even when wet and rabbit skins are thin enough that they wouldn't interfere with getting your shoe on. Something else that could be done is that the cuffs could be turned up and tied into place to make the moccasin into sort of an ankle boot. One more thing I'd like to talk about before I close, that is the durability. If you abuse your moccasins, wearing them wet or shuffling around on pavement a lot, they'll only last you a couple of months. For this reason, most modern moccasins have got double or even triple thickness soles, up here, these extra soles would only be added once the whole original sole had worn out. If you take care of your moccasins and you don't push them too hard, they can last you for several years. Anyway, that's all I have to say. I hope you enjoyed.
Bye-bye.